Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. In the past few videos, we were learning about the various defacification methods, and so far we learned about max membership principle, centroid method, weighted average method, mean max membership principle, center of sums, and center of largest area. In this video, we will see the method of first or last of maxima. After that, we will also briefly discuss on how to choose the defacification method that should be used for an application. So, let's start our lecture. The first or last of maxima is a very simple method. Let me try to explain it with the help of an example. Consider three fuzzy outputs A1, A2 and A3 like this. Then, the first step is to take the union of the fuzzy sets. If we take the union of fuzzy sets A1, A2 and A3, we will get a fuzzy set AK like this. Next step is to find the height of the fuzzy set formed by the union. In our example, we can see that the maximum membership value is 0.9. So, height is equal to 0.9. Then, we need to find the set of all values of Z for which the membership value is equal to height. In our example, this set is given by Z H G T equal to set of 3 as the membership value of 3 is 0.9 which is equal to the height in this case. Similarly, this set includes all the values from 7 to 9 including 7 and 9 because the membership values here are also equal to the height. Next, to find the defacified value set star by first of maxima, we simply need to find the lowest value in the set ZHGT. That is, in this example, as per first of maxima method, set star is given by minimum of 3 set of 7 to 9 including 7 9 is equal to 3. So, defacified value as of first of maxima method is 3. Similarly, as per last of maxima, the defacified value is given by set star equal to maximum of set of 3, 7 to 9 including 7 and 9 and this is equal to 9. I hope this method is clear to you. Now that we learned about all 7 methods of defacification, which one is the best method? Well, that depends on the context or problem at hand. However, there are five criterias developed by Helen Doon and Thomas in their 1993 paper Defacification in Fuzzy Controllers. I have given the link to the paper in the description. The first criterion is continuity. As per this, a small change in the input of a defacification process should not produce a large change in the output. The second criterion is known as disambiguity. This criteria says that there shouldn't be any ambiguity in the defacified value. That is, a defacification method should always result in a unique value for set star. For example, if you consider this output function, we can see that max membership principle is not applicable here as it will give two defacified values 3 and 7. This is an ambiguity. Similarly, center of largest area method is also not applicable here as both the convex subregions have the same area. Now, the third criterion for selection of defacification method is plausibility. For set star to be plausible, it should lie approximately in the middle of the support of output fuzzy set and also should have a high degree of membership in the output fuzzy set. If we take the same example and use centroid method, 
even though set star lies in the middle its membership value is zero so centroid method is not plausible here the fourth criterion is computational simplicity this criteria suggests that the more time consuming a method is the less value it has for instance the height method the mean max method and the first or last of maxima methods are faster than centroid or center of sums methods now the last criterion is weighting method this is again highly problem dependent based on the problem at hand you have to decide which weighted method to use for instance in the weighted average method the weights are individual membership values while in the center of sums the weights are the area of respective membership functions so while assessing which diversification method to use you should consider all these five criteria and also consider the goodness or reliability of the answer in the context of data available okay that's all for this lecture in the next video we will see a solved example for a diversification problem i hope that all the concepts taught in this lecture are clear to all of you if you have any doubts in this video please feel free to ask them in the comments either me or some other viewer will surely help you out also if you found this lecture useful please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel thank you for watching properly and have a great day